How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at my newest movie trading company uh, 99 Cent Bin Hall. Now uh, this is my uh, second in this series so if you want to see the first at the end of the video there will be a playlist with all my hauls in them and you can find that one there. Uh, that being said, if uh, if you're familiar with this channel, you know that usually on this day, because uh, every two weeks, um, I do a Dollar Tree haul. Now, I went to all my local Dollar Trees, and there's simply nothing there that's new and interesting, that uh, nothing really to uh, to pick up. So, if, if you remember during the videos I was talking about it, last time they did a big... Uh, a big DVD drop. It was a lot of stuff I already had, plus it was DVD. There's hardly any Blu-rays. Um, so I will get back onto that when Dollar Tree puts out more stuff because, yeah, right now they just didn't have any. But you can't keep me away from the cheap movies. So to substitute for this time around, I do have this movie trading company 99 Cent Bin Hall. And as opposed to the Dollar Tree haul, the movies here are a lot more uh, random, and you never really know what you'll see there. So, we're going to talk about these movie trading company movies, and we'll start off with Killers 2, The Beast. Now, you can't see the 2 because of the sticker, but it is on the spine. This is uh, Killers 2, and you got this really fun red face on the, the cover there, probably blood. Flip it to the back. And it talks about there's a drug deal gone wrong. Heather is sent to a maximum security insane asylum, but she starts trying to fight her way out and discovers that um, there's something else in the asylum and that maybe uh, maybe she shouldn't have uh, you know been attacking possible allies. Um, if we look on the bottom, glad I picked this up because this is a movie from the asylum so that's really cool um i have a a pretty decent collection of asylum movies not being said i don't have killers one so i will have to look for that but this looks fun so when i get to that i'm glad i'll have the sequel for uh just a dollar there so there's the front cover on the disc but off to the side so you get lots of black here and if you look at the sticker this was actually a rental from albertson's which is a Kind of a weird place. Didn't know uh, Albertsons had rentals. Um, up next, we have this shiny film uh, called Slash, where blood is sown, evil is grown. And you get this really nice foil cover. Love stuff like that. Uh, creepy killer on the inside in a, a field. And flip it to the back, and it talks about how uh, Slash is a rock band on the edge of fame. Um, but when the lead singer is called home for a funeral, they discover there's something up with his hometown, something to do with a harvest of blood. So that's a pretty cool concept, a rock band versus an evil town, and you get some creepy guy there, and we flip, uh, we flip it open, and we see the, the front cover, but this time he's in color, and you can see this red here, so... Uh, yeah, a little easier to see, but it's not shiny foil, so you can actually see he's got like a knife, and that's how he's tearing through the uh, the cover. But yeah, so Slash, uh, probably a cool slasher film. Have to check it out. Slasher film, and it's just called just Slash. Anyway, up next, we have a movie called Safety in Numbers. Reality was their worst nightmare. Pretty simple machete. But if you look close, you can see blood, a face, and, uh, or rather, a boat, a face, and blood. Um, and this looks like a former, I think, family video or something. Someone got most of the sticker off. Uh, but flip it to the back. Six contestants of Survivor Island, which is probably a lot like Survivor, um, are asked to come for a, uh, re a reunion special. They get to the island, and they find that their little house is all messed up. There's a note that says, you will die, and there's no uh, no camera crew there. But they've convinced themselves it's just a joke, uh, something the production team is doing to get them on edge. So they all stay around. But, of course, we know it's going to be a slasher movie. So open it up. The uh, 
cover or the disc is the same image, uh, but we find the disc has more blood on it. So that's interesting. Um, go into the next one. That is the, the last slasher one, this next one. The Black Gate, where evil lives in this cool hotel. Flip it to the back, and it uh, talks about how Rebecca, who is also played by a Rebecca, um, owns this inn, and it seems really peaceful and idyllic. But a psychic investigator comes and is getting all sorts of visions, and they find that there's some sort of evil tool that uh, was thought to have been destroyed. So a, a cool agent object there. So that's uh, that's pretty interesting. Gotta love the hotels that are haunted, you know. And there's the disc. You know, I never heard of this before, but the cover looks really interesting. That's a cool logo. So hopefully the movie's as interesting as, uh, as the cover makes it look to be. Up next, we got... Uh, Die Thousand Augen did Dr. Moros, or as the spine would tell us in England, uh, in English, The Thousand Eyes of Dr. Moros. And this movie, it appears to be an English release, but uh, has the German poster on it for some reason with uh, the German language. Uh, but we flip it to the back, and we learn absolutely nothing about this movie because the back is just an ad for Sinister Cinema. So a weird, uh, a weird. DVD release, open it up, we can see very uh, a standard disc with images that don't relate to the movie uh, and just the, the text there to tell us what it is. So, uh, pretty uh, weird release. Uh, this is a, an older movie. I think it's kind of cheesy. I'm guessing it's a mad scientist type movie because you have Doctor in there. But I'm not 100% certain, so um have to see what this is. I think I've heard something about it. Uh, some YouTuber maybe, or this might even be a Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode. I'm not sure. I'll uh, I'll look it up, but seems like an interesting classic uh, horror movie there. Up next, um, we're out of horror, uh, but these all seem pretty interesting. Avalon, uh, Mamoru Oshi film, and you get this cool sci-fi fantasy lady. We flip it to the back. And you can see her silhouette is the bottom there. And it talks about, in a future, young people are addicted to a game called Avalon. And there's a girl named Ash, who is a star player. And she normally plays alone, but the group hears about a secret level. And she decides to team up with this group. And they're going to try to find the depths of this game. This looks like a darker, like, Japanese version of Ready Player One, although this came out way before. Uh, but yeah, it looks really cool. The inside, it gives us this uh, cool poster, uh, postcard. So hey, a bonus item there. Then we get the uh, the disc, really shiny, and it's got that silhouette again. The silhouette's also on the back of the postcard there. But hey, that is, uh, that's pretty cool. So let's put that in. And the next movie we have, a Danny Trejo film, Don't Shoot the Hero. This is like an action heist uh, heist film. And we flip it to the back, and it talks about how there's a young 30-something couple. They're getting married. Uh, and they're at a ring shop to buy the ring. When there's a heist that comes in, and it goes wrong, and they get tangled up in it, uh, uh, Danny Trejo owns a casino, and he was in charge of the heist. And he's sending in a couple hitmen to try to clean this thing up. So, a cool uh, crime but with complications movie. Flip it open. There's the disc. And then there's this weird insert that uh, only covers the bottom part. I don't know if it's supposed to be a bookmark or if there was something up there. Maybe it's a sticker and the top one got peeled off. I No, I don't think it's a sticker. Uh, a weird insert nonetheless. But... Uh, that's uh, really cool looking like, it almost looks like those little uh, things you'd see in the movie to tell you, you know, what movie was, was on there. You know, the board above the ticket booth. And lastly, Dark Horse Indie, the same uh, company that put out My Name is Bruce, uh, The Challenge. So, don't know much about this. Um, talks about how there's a, a post-apocalyptic, seemingly like Mad Max style future, and... There's uh, a bunch of crazy warlords, and there's a select group of people that still know old-timey martial arts, and they have to 
to fight off the warlord, so that could be pretty cool. And hey, Dark Horse Indie, I love a lot of Dark Horse comics, in particular Alien Predator stuff, so I'll see what they do as a movie, although I don't know if this is based on one of their comics or if it's just a, a movie they made. There's the disc with the, the guy from the front, and glad to pick it up, add it to my Dark Horse stuff. Anyway, that would be the last thing I have for you guys. We covered eight movies, and they're all really cool stuff I've not heard of before, and I'm glad to really, when I do these movie trading company stuff, look deeper into the movies and see, you know, what movies there are that people might not have heard of, and it's really cool to see stuff like this, you know, really a cooler, deeper dive. Anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, uh, thank you. You are really helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom. Should be my hauls playlist if you want to see. I got Dollar Tree hauls, Half Price Books hauls, Walmart Black Friday hauls. There's some really cool stuff in here, and of course, part one of Movie Trading Company. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again uh, very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom.